Welcome to New Tech and my Kion Smooth Q mobile phone gimbal. You put your mobile phone in that and it compensates. Unfortunately, for this uh, well, gimbal, after around 30 minutes, it goes all flaccid. Yeah, it, it's useless at the moment. Well, unless you only want to do 30 minutes worth of recording and then charge it for another three to five hours and, and start all over again. Now, it's not a bad gimbal. Although modern mobile phones are, well, they're quite large. So, I, well, I compensated the weight by adding this little uh, counterbalance on the end there. But that's not what this video is about. It's about changing the batteries on this smooth coup. Now, I've ordered the batteries. I've pre-tinned the batteries. And here are my batteries. And I ordered these on C discount here in France. But you can, uh, well, you can buy them anywhere, really. These are the 800-650s uh, batteries. And... Uh, yeah, you know, these one particular ones are nine thousand, well, nine thousand eight hundred milliamp hours. So they're quite potent. These ones are. Um, the bigger batteries than the ones that are actually in the actual smooth coupe. So hopefully, it even lasts even longer than twelve hours of new batteries because that's how long it's supposed to last for. Um, the three point seven volt Leon rechargeable batteries. Okay, brilliant. Now, like I said, I tinned them. I used the solder on to tin them, so I basically prepared it by put a little bit of solder on the end there and a little bit of solder on there and on the on, on both batteries. And what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how um, I took it apart. I've already took it apart um, because it takes a little while to get, you know get in there and take it apart because it's a bit fiddly. But I'll show you how I did and things to watch out for. Now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move the camera down, facing downwards, onto um, my desk here, so I can show you what we're doing. Also, I've got my solder irons all heated up. I've got a glue gun heated up. I'll explain in a minute why I won't use that. I might not need it. You know, we'll see how we get on. But um, what I'm going to do is uh, take it apart and show you how I've done that and things to watch out for. So let's bring this down. It might be a bit of a longer video than normally for this sort of thing, but because I'm not actually... Uh, yeah, back over there like so. You don't need to see me. You don't need to see that. That looks better. Uh, that'll do. Won't it? Is that about right? Look a bit higher. All right. Uh, bear with us. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Not that way. <laughs> it's quite hard. Oh, there. Oh, that makes sense. There you go. That will do with it. So I push my keyboard out of the way just to give me a bit of room. And then, if you're wondering, I'm using the Elgato uh, face cam uh, for this video. I might leave links in the description actually if you're interested because the camera is actually quite a good little camera. Um, or that uses a quite a bit of resources, it's USB free. Well, so okay, here's the smooth coup as you can see. And let's move these bits and pieces out of the way. So I need some tape as well. Don't need a coffee cup there. Don't need eye drops there either. They're done for. Put them in. Some pincers. And we've got our two batteries here. Okay. Like I say, I've already tinned them. So how do you take it apart? Well, the first thing you've got to do is you've got to remove a screw which happens to be mounted inside the quarter thread, your tripod mount. There's a screw inside there. So you've got to remove that first. It can be a bit uh, awkward to get out. Yeah, don't not unscrew, but once you've unscrewed it, it doesn't seem to want to come out. Well, this one didn't anyway. And I have to shake it and tap it until eventually it did come out. But what I used to actually uh, take it apart was... Because it's just clipped together, okay? But it's tight, really tight. I used a guitar pick. You could use probably um, some of the mobile phone tools that you get, like the plastic wedges and stuff like that would do the job, all right? Um, I also use some old credit cards. As you can see, I've gnawed all the corners of these credit cards now. And what they were used for, they're a bit like using tire levers. You know, when you put one tire lever in on, you're know, changing a tire on a bike, or, you know, in a tube, what have you, put one in and you wedge it in place and you go to the next. And you kind of do the same with this. But it's not that easy, and you're at risk of damaging the edge. You see, there's a little bit of damage here, but not really minor. I've seen it, because I, before I did this, I actually did check online some other videos. But they, they didn't point out some things you need to watch. One thing, you obviously, you can damage the edge. Not great. Also, you need to know where the clips are. Now, if I can show you where those clips are, it's really, really important. Now, it should just pop off, because I've already had it off now. So, um, so that is the cover. Okay, and we've got these little pressure clips on the side here. That's not the problem, but if you look on this piece here, if you're not careful, you see where I push the uh, bring it a bit closer. The where I push the actual toothpick in there, not toothpick, the uh, guitar pick in there, it sort of damages the edge a little bit, but that's okay, that's neither here nor there. But you've got to be careful if I push that in there, or there, or there, I'm, I'm at risk of breaking these off. 
Because then, then, yeah, they're not exactly that that heavy. You know what I mean? Not that strong. So you could break them off. You don't want to do that because you want to clip the cover back on, don't you? And the same on this side here. They're in the opposite of each other. So you've got two clips near the top, one either side, just below the actual, uh, what do you call it, the yaw, um, there and there. And about two inches or 50 mil further down, there's another two clips there and there. And you've got one halfway up the battery here and there, on either side of the battery there. And, and then you've got on the bottom here, you've also got two clips, one there and one there. And obviously, what about the clip it all back into place? You don't want to have to glue it on again because you don't get the thing off again in the food should, will, will you? And you don't want to be wrapping the tape around the whole together either. Anyway, as you can see, that is obviously the battery. So we're going to take that battery out. Carefully, does it. Now, I have never done this before. All I'm going by what I've seen online already. Now, inside here, there should be a charge circuit. Now, I know it looks different to these batteries, right? But this, is about, this battery pack is actually two of these batteries inside that pack. Now, the likelihood is we're not going to be able to reuse this um, heat shrink anyway, and I haven't got any, so I'm going to be probably using some black insulation tape like that. So I'm going to run this down here. I've got to be careful. Um, the charge circuit is obviously on this side because that's where the wires are going up in. So I'm going to run this knife sort of down there into the uh, the heat shrink, like so. And this battery says, well, God, this is a set. It says it's 200, 2,000 milliamp hour. These ones are 9,800 milliamp hour. Believe me. So it should be a bit... That's the capacity of the battery. That's basically how much storage it's got. How much electricity is in that battery is, well, almost five times more than these. Now, I've got a feeling it's probably in... Um, or wired in parallel which means the capacity will not be yeah if, if there's one series that was batteries that are wired in series be like what like that uh you know positive to negative positive to negative like so okay and then the you've basically got the accumulative voltage easiest batteries are 3.7 volts so then it'll be what 7.4 volts is what you'll end up with from there to there but if they're wired um the other way around so like for instance positive positive negative to negative like so and like so they'll still be 3.7 volts you're not actually adding voltage but what you are doing is you're you're doubling up the capacity of the battery um so instead of being 9800 it's going to be 1800 1960 uh yeah so it'd be considerable 1900 yeah 19 yeah 1900 well, 1960 or 600 oh anyway Oh, in 1900, 600, sorry, yeah. <laughs> I'll get in a minute. Now, the, so, so I've got a part of that off there, so uh, I've got to be careful. The video ends up being ridiculously long. Right, I've got to be careful as well that there's a charge circuit. Because it's a lithium ion battery, it has to have a controlling... Yeah, basically it's got sensors to say what it uses, what the temperature of the batteries are and stuff like that. And that is behind here. I can see it going in. I can see a little circuit board there, just there. So I'll pull that off here, gently does it, because I don't want to break anything, obviously. Goodness, everything's delicate. Aha, uh -huh, I see. So I might, that might be going back on, we'll see. So we've got two wires entering that board there. Do I need to unsolder that? Probably not. Now at this stage, it's probably a good idea to make a, a visual note of what's going on. So what I'm going to need to just use my phone and just take a picture of it. Just to make doubly sure that, you know, I don't do something, you know, in case I forget or uh, do something stupid. And I need to, um, you know, once my phone boots up properly, there you go. <laughs> da, 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 back that way. I can't even find the camera now. What's the camera going? Oh, there it is. There you go. So I'm just going to take a picture of that. So I can see, as a visual reference, um, what is what. And that way... Uh, I've got a yeah, it's like it's like a notebook. So we've got a charge circuit here. This is obviously a USB. Um, never used that to be honest. I've always used the one on the side for charging, which is that one there. So uh, I think you can actually plug your phone into this, so you actually end up um, well connecting to it, but also well, I don't know this. Does it connect to it? Maybe, but also um, ch you know, charge your phone off off the, off the device. But that's a bit silly thing to do, if you ask me. Uh, okay, so. We've got the paper on the end here that needs to come off. And as you can see, these are flat tops and they're wired in parallel, not series. Yeah, so you've got, you know, that's negative to negative. 
So the combined power of this battery is 2000 milliamp hours and the combined power of these ones are almost five times more. Now, I'm hoping I'm going to be able to solder it quite easily in this video because um, sometimes it's not that easy. That's why I pretend these. And these ones, you can buy these with the flat tops just like this. Um, but these are bigger batteries, so I kind of went for these ones. But these have got nodules on the top, which might make it a bit harder to solder. Um, you know, they tinned up and they sold up okay, so it wasn't you know, too much of a problem. So what I can see what's going on there, we've got to remove this from here. If it doesn't pan out or work out, you can always replace that with wires if you want. You should be able to prise that off. If I, if I can't, well then, we won't. <laughs> Sometimes you get a screwdriver underneath them and they can come off. Or but You need to be able to solder that bag on if you can. It, otherwise, I'll be using wires. If I've got some of these. Okay, that's kind of off, sort of. Right, and then we've got these two here. Now, while means I've got this to this stage now, and I can see that it is wide and parallel, I'm going to get these two batteries here because I know what way they've got to go now. They've got to go that way around, okay? And I'm going to get a bit, of, a little bit of tape, a bit of temporary tape, in this case. Try to cut yourself. And I'm going to place the two batteries. Onto the piece of tape. All right, use an old credit card on the end there to make sure I'm lining it up properly, and that both, in this case, positive, positive, negative to negative. All right, and we're going to put that on there like so. Well, not quite like that because they're not in line. That's fair. And the reason why I'm going to do this is because just make life easier for myself. Things that flop about all over the place when I'm trying to solder it all together. I'm going to glue the batteries together. To do that, I'm going to use a glue gun such as this one. So I'm going to put a couple of blobs of glue in there and that will just hold it together and make it a lot easier for me to actually solder the the ends. It's not going to be flopping around all over the place on me. So I'm just going to whack a bit of that down there. A bit of hot melt glue. You don't have to do this if you, you know, you could just tape it together if you want. You just want to make life easier. There you go. And once I get to that stage, I'm going to flip it around. Do, 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 do. Oh, that's not, not cool enough yet. So while that's doing that, that could be cooling down. Let's tap it down so it's not... If you do that, just lick your finger a bit. You can then, you know, smooth it off a little bit if it's a bit stick, a bit sticking out. But remember to lick your fingers, get hot. <laughs> um, and now we just carry on prising this off. Like I said, I have never ever done this before so i'm just hoping it all you know goes well if not it'll be a disaster video so i'm making sure my knife is going underneath you can use a screwdriver because it causes more damage but i'm trying to get underneath that so i'm just kind of scraping it off so to speak i don't want to damage the actual um the metal you know connectors if i can help it I've, but you know if you do it's not you know the end of the world because you can always ah oh, there you go that went off perfectly that one did you can always replace it with some wires, but make sure the wires are thick enough. So look at the size of these cables here, and make sure they're the same size. They look like about one mil. Uh, and then we've got to do the same on this side. Same, uh, almost the same situation, though, but what? Okay, so you've got the positive there, and the negative there. It's a bit tricky, but, you know, I'm just hoping they're going to solder well, as well you know, solder easily, because it's not always the case. These at the end a bit tougher. You have to be careful what slip and cut yourself. Don't do the scalpel or thin bladed knife because it, you're just going to end up hurting yourself. This knife was quite sharp. sharp. Maybe not quite so sharp now. <laughs> Alright, and I'll do the same on that one down there. You see, remember that this side here, this end, so make, that's your visual note, goes to negative. And this side, oh, hang on, double check, double check, double check. Oh, that might be positive, actually. That might be positive, that end. It is. So that side's positive, and this side's negative. You could mark it. If you've got a marker pen or something, just, you could put, you know, just put a little mark on it to denote what it is. That's the thing. is, so you've got to think to yourself, will I remember? You most probably will, 
but you might not. <laughs> so mark it as you make make visual notes. You could use your mobile phone, or you can write it down, or you can make, you know scribble it down on the actual device itself, so you can see for yourself. So I'm trying to be as careful as I can because I don't want to damage anything. Also, while the battery is connected, be careful because you don't what you don't want to do. Because remember, it's about what. 7.4 volts going through, which isn't a huge amount, but it could damage something. So it's disconnected now, but while it's connected, make careful you don't you know cross anything over. You know, short circuit anything. But very carefully, rising that off. Being very cautious and careful about my fingers. You could wear gloves, I suppose. But I can't wear gloves. And the reason for that is because I've got carpal tunnel syndrome or had carpal tunnel syndrome. I had the operation, but I still um have problems. So as you can see, that was positive. That end, is, that end is positive, and uh, that end is negative. So now what I think about is, you know, that's now dry, so it's now holding itself together now, you see. I might even put another little bit of glue in this side here, then I can put that down, put it to one side. Yeah, just, just to hold it. Right, and while it's not on the floor, out of the way. Careful where you leave it, things can tend to dribble. Which is done on my bench desk. I mean, tap it down my finger so it's no bit sticking up, <laughs> bits of stringy plastic everywhere. Oh dear. Well, okay, so that's my battery pack kind of ready to be resoldered into the device. I don't know if there's even any charge, I ain't checked actually. I ain't got a uh, meter on me, so I should have checked see if there's any charge in there. We'll see, will we? you know, it might turn on, it might not. Hopefully, it does. Now, you've got to remember that that was positive. All right, which is those knobbly, the knobbly end in this case, in this battery, knobbly end. Um, and it's got to be connected to the positive side. Now, also got to remember that the charge circuit here is going to be a bit fiddly because it's, it's still connected, you see. So this end is going to go onto there, all right? And that end's going to have to go onto there. And obviously you need to think about the, the room for the actual charge circuit so the more you can do to actually hold it don't i'm not going to use glue to hold that in place i'm just going to use a bit of a bit of tape right like that was there before there you had this piece of tape on there which is obviously to prevent it from short circuiting so i'll put that back on right oh here it was to go on to the end remember that i'll start at the end that's got to go on there like that And then I'm going to put a bit of tape on there as well. <laughs> Whatever you can do to help yourself. Uh, this this might be easier. To help yourself. Otherwise, you're just going to be fiddling about and things flop back. Imagine if the batteries were separate. That had been a problem. And this way, we can just uh, get, grab a bit of tape and hold that into place as well. I'll be putting more tape around there once I'm ready. Not yet, but I will, but I will be. So it becomes like a natural black battery pack. Don't have to be black tape, it could be any colour you like. <laughs> so I'm just going to place that on there like so. And I'll trim the end of that. It's too long. You know, I, I, there's a professional out there, you know, tell me how I'm supposed to do this. <laughs> I know I could use heat shrink, can I? But that's that's heat shrink that is. So um yeah, that would be the right yeah, the right way of doing it. But this this is gonna this is gonna work. So it's holding it now, you see. Now ideally you want to be able to position this in a way. That goes on there like so, and then that goes on there like so. I need to solder both of them back onto that battery there. Now my soldering iron's hot at the moment, so if I get one on that hold that end in place, right? Let's make sure it's in a, in a good position. I also got to think. I've got to try and get it because well, I'm hitting the battery up. I want to make sure I keep it cool as well. So I need to cool it down. I can do that with you know, a pair, putting a pair of cutters on there in a minute as well. You can get like heat sinks and that you can clip on, but it's, it's a bit of an awkward uh, position. Well, I've got my, my uh, solder, which has got caught up in everything else that's going on here. Okay, this sold none. In case you didn't realise, this is a uh, well, it's a Chinese thing, and it's it's a regulated sold nine. 
but it's a good thing that you only can't see it properly in there. I might leave a link in the description if I can find it. It's a, it's a 97, 937D. And I can't read the name because it's some Chinese weird thing. So anyway. <laughs> Make sure you sold 9. You can 10 your sold 9. It's not, it doesn't, you know, the solder goes onto the iron. Mm, it's okay-ish. You've got a bit of sponge, what damn bit of sponge works. Yeah, it's doing that. Alright. Alright, so I've already tinned it. So as long as I can get this bit, you know, uh, hot enough and uh, soldered on, so we'll see. We will see, hopefully it works. Ideally, I should have this vertical. Okay, I think it's working. You don't want no dry joints or anything like that because it does draw quite a bit of power from the batteries. I think that's probably it. Get a bit more on the other side there. You've got to be so careful. You don't want to overheat it, you see. Got my solder on turned right up. Oh, just dropped a bit of uh, I think that's it. It's on. Keep it cool. Right, I don't want the battery to heat up. Oh, just put that on there just to act, act as a bit of a heat sink. Not ideal. Not so I'm not a professional. I'm just a uh, out of necessity, really. I don't have much money, so I can't, you know, afford to pay anyone to do this. If somebody say, hey, you get something to pay, do it. Don't do it yourself. Oh, what mess you made. <laughs> they do, you know, that's what they say. Oh, you can't solve the fishy at Valgo. Well, you're probably right. <laughs> as long as it sticks together, it's got a connection. So, I've got that little fold in there, so I want to make sure it's pushed down. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's, that'll, be, that'll be fine. I want to keep that right upright, though. I'm going to keep that flipping in, in position. See, I could have done with some helping hands around, is what I should have done. Or I could have put it in a wood clamp and just clamp it, and, I, and the clamp itself would have stayed put. That might have been a bit easier than what I'm doing at the moment. Right, see whether or not we can whoops, put that there. And then keep that upright. Ah, oh, that's better. <laughs> might need a, this is quite a hot um sold nine, but might need a hotter sold nine to do this job really, but it's doing it. See, you risk, if you get too hot, you risk of melting all the plastic on the battery. You don't necessarily want to do that. There you go. There you are. That's on. Okay, so that end is soldered. Blow it. Keep it cool it down. Chuck it into the water. No, don't do that. Okay, that one's on. I'm quite, well, I'm quite happy with that. That's good. And now let's um, do the opposite, yeah, the opposite end, which is a bit tricky because it's closer to the board. You know, to the actual uh, gimbal itself. So we've got these two on here. We're going to solder on here. Oh, let's bring it into the middle. Do you want my widescreen monitor? Cool, isn't it? They're, they're great things. That's a um, Samsung widescreen monitor. It's a, it's a great thing. Apart from... Um, oh, good. That's the one we are. Keep it on there somehow. Apart from... When you... Most documents you see, 84 documents... It's not actually a great format for that. It's great for move, the movies. I'll tell you what it is good for when I'm editing videos. I try not to edit videos if I can help it these days. And this is an unedited video. So um, what you see is what you get. So if it's going on... Yeah, that's, that's done it. Oh. That's it. Let that cool, we'll move it again. Let that cool down a bit. <laughs> right. So, a bit blobby, but it's definitely on there. I soldered on there. Yeah, that's the, yeah, good reason to... um. 
three, you know, to uh, well, tin, tin the ends of the batteries before you start. That's what I think. Anyway, that's what I did. Seems to work. Oh, I've got to hold that down on there somehow. God, what easier than done, isn't it? There you go. So it's going to go on there like that. That's good. Okay, that's the last connection. And then we'll be putting it back together. We'll try and make sure it goes over the top of the, the tang of the yeah, let's done it. There you go. I'm happy with that. Don't seem to heat it up too much, that's good. Right, so we've soldered it. I'm hoping there's a little bit of power in the battery so I can yeah, test that it's okay. Right, so we've connected both of these ends to both positives like it was before, and we've connected um, the other ends to the negative. I'm just going to make sure that it's, you know, basically, get a bit of a pluck on my fingers, make sure it's on. Yeah, that's on. So that one. Just in case it's dry joint, you see. No, that's on. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's definitely there. So, okay, then we'll bring it a bit closer and see. So you see there, what I've done is I've soldered, you know, positives to the top, that way, towards the board. And uh, and the negatives go to the bottom. So now what I need to do is just well, got, well, what we don't want is a situation where it's potentially going to uh, cause a short. So what we do is we put them back on if that works. If not, I'll have to just use insulation tape. So we could, oh, take, hang on, the glue guns are hot. So I'll glue gun, put a little bit of glue into there, and that way I'll make sure it stays on then. Right, so ugh, stringy stuff. <laughs> Do the same on the other end, and then I'll wrap it in the uh, wrap it in the actual um, yeah in the insulation tape. I'm sticking to my fingers now. Gosh, <laughs> more fingers and thumbs. There you go. So that's going to be on there. Right. Double check there's still plenty of room for the battery to go in. Now I'll chuck all those oh God, this glue still wet. Or oh, hot. I haven't actually took up all the room. No, nope, it looks good. That looks okay. It's alright. Plenty of room there. Right, so now we're gonna wrap the battery. I haven't tested the battery or basically all works yet to be honest, but I'm fairly confident it's gonna be okay. Unless the batteries are no good, the new ones. Okay, let's bring it back up onto there. I'm gonna wrap that there. Bring that out a little bit. I was using a knife earlier, but I'm gonna use scissors now. It's easier. Let's cut that off there. Oh no, it's not pretty. Well, it doesn't matter, never gonna see it again. I hope, you know, I hope the battery lasts you know, for the rest of the life of the gimbal. A bit of that. We'll do the same on the other side. That'll hold the. Uh, well. Like I say, I'm doing this live, so. Well, I say live, I'm doing that so it's unedited video, so. Any mistakes you're saying? Oh, well, never mind. <laughs> a bit things and thumbs at the moment, I am. It's a bit awkward here because you're right close to the, uh, you know, to, to the actual gimbal mechanism. Yeah, you know, the, the circuit boards and stuff. The actual gimbal itself. So now that's kind of in there. That's all together. It's all, I've glued the battery together anyway, haven't I? So it's not going to come apart. No. That on there like so. So now it's just a case of trying to get that back inside there. Remember, there's this, this connection there at the bottom. Take that away. I'm just slide trying to put, put that back inside a bit of a tight fit there actually <clears throat> can't be over because you've got to get the uh, other bits in haven't you get the cover back on yeah that's right that's there i think all right that's there 
And what you don't want is if you input your battery being able to slide about either. So you've got to make sure nothing's interfering with you getting the cover back on. So when you slide these back, make sure they're right in. That goes over the top there like so. Just so far, so good. Now, I'm not going to show you putting the, the screw back in because I've left it in the other room. All right, but that screw, where the hell's the screw go? That screw doesn't actually look like it holds the coat. Oh, it does. It screws into there. Yeah? So that has to be able to slide behind that battery. So you need to make sure you've got enough room for that to slide in between the battery and that little bit of plastic just in there. Let me bring it closer so you can see. Just in there. So, it's, you know, so you've got to make sure that's far enough forwards to get that in. Otherwise, you're not going to. Yeah, that's just about going to squeeze in there, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> Because I've got to put those blobs of solder on the end. You said I've made it a little bit longer than it was before because bef the old batteries are a tang type like that. <clears throat> um, you can, get, yeah, obviously, if you can get the tang ones, you'd be, you'd be better off if you do, to be honest. That goes on there, like so. Uh, I've got to make sure that can't in that these wires don't get caught up on anything. Switch it, actually, use that. Just push them down with a guitar pick. Okay, that should be okay. Now, because I haven't broken off anything, hopefully, <laughs> it should snap back into place. And providing it's got room do so now you, uh, you've got that usb connection you've got to try and get that lined up as well with the old yeah with the old oh, it's going in that's that okay so far um and what you could do what i'm going to do is just to help it grab a usb like this one push that in the old so i can make sure it's lining up at the moment it looks like it's not Okay, it's, it's definitely. Yeah, that did it. See, I used this in the old, just a way of just twisting it around a little bit. It wasn't like quite lining up because I've, I haven't actually given as much room. There's not as much room with the new battery than there is with the old one. So now hopefully we can squeeze that together. Or should I just see if it turns on? That's what I'm going to do first. I'm just going to see if it turns on. Yeah, I hope so. There's no power in the battery at all. This needs to go on charge. Should be supplied with some power, isn't it? So maybe the battery's a dud. We'll see later anyway. So um yeah, so basically you snap that together. I'm not gonna snap it together just in case there's a problem a problem with that battery or something I've done. So I'm gonna put it on charge next. Anyway, you can see what you've got to do to actually replace your battery. Um, I might upload another video later of it working, it's just so hopefully it's working anyway, just so you can see it for yourself. But at the moment, it, there seems to be an issue, so let's just put this on charge. What well, you're saying it's charging? That's maybe that's a good sign. So we'll turn on while while it's charging. I don't think it works like that. No, it doesn't. Anyway, so it's charging, so that's a, that's a good sign. So, see what happens. So, I'm not going to squeeze it together yet until I've put some power into that battery. Anyway. Oh, let's bring it back over. Hello there. <laughs> you can see what I did. And there's the uh, sold 9 that I was using, just so to give you an idea. Um, yeah, you don't have to use that kind of sold 9, but that's what I got. So anyway, I hope you found that of useful, of useful, of use, if you're trying to replace a battery in your um, Kion Smooth Q gimbal. It's not a bad gimbal, really. They're okay. They're quite a budget item, but um, 
not bad they're quite well made and they work so anyway thank you for watching please boop the old like button because that helps the channel you know anyway i'll get some breakfast and patiently wait for this to charge up hopefully it'll be okay we'll see you later and I'll, i will upload another video to prove one way or another have i messed that up or is it now a working gimbal well longer than 30 minutes anyway ta-ta